There's only one thing that guarantees you'll get better at golf. You know, pros are amazing at this thing, amateurs do it really, really poorly, but no matter your age or ability, you can really learn it. And that is becoming much better at impact, whether that be your driver or your irons. Great players have an amazing ability to assess. When they hit a bad shot, they know exactly what they've done wrong. They're able to assess what's happened at impact, even in that microsecond. Amateur golfers you just don't do this very, very well. And then what happens is you hit a bad shot, you kind of wonder what's going on and you try to guess what you're doing and start to get into the rabbit hole of all these different swing things, right? In this video, I'm gonna give you a very, very simple way that you can start to know exactly what's happened at impact so you can assess impact and then more importantly, show you how you can fix it immediately on the golf course, whether that be your irons or your driver. Now, before I get into the video, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. Or these videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you'll never have to remember a thing. I'll always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below. So, let, without further ado, let's get stuck into step number one. Now I know that that ball has come off the toe of the golf club and the, without even looking at the screen. Now me knowing this is super valuable when I'm on the golf course because if I can start to feel that ball coming off the toe, I can make subtle adjustments. I want you to learn the same. The question is, how do you do this? Let's look at that. Here we go, look. Without looking, I knew it would come off the toe. So how can you, you haven't got track man, what do we do on the golf course? Well the first thing you've got to do you have to learn like I've done over the years, you have to learn to feel where it's coming out the face. The very first thing I want you to do is this, you need to be amazing at assessing impact. Get some foot powder spray. Spray the face like this. And you can do this on a golf course as long as it's not competition. And start to kind of play a game where you start to figure out or assess, before we make any changes, assess what you're doing at impact. So, let's have a look at this. I'm gonna hit a shot now and I've hit that ball I know off the toe of the club. There we go, off the toe, and look at this. What are we seeing? A ball that struck off the toe of the golf club, okay? Now, if you start, if you start to assess this, the first part of the game is, is to, first of all, learn the feel. So I knew that was off the toe. You hit some shots and you could play a guessing game. I think that's off the toe. Let's have a look. Oh, I got it wrong. Keep hitting shots, playing around with this until your guesses are correct. Now you've got the feel of where heel strikes are and toe strikes are, that'll be super valuable. So when you've got that feel, how do you then change it so it now comes more out of the center? Well, very simple. You've assessed your strike, you've assessed that you're now maybe, let's say, hitting it off the toe of the club. All you do is you grab a tee peg, and you can do this on the golf course, put the club right behind the ball and put the tee peg right next to, basically, the golf ball here, right? And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hit a shot and I'm actually gonna take the ball and the tee peg out, simple as that. Because if I miss the tee peg, there's your toe strike, but by actually striking the ball and the tee peg, I'm gonna move that strike much, much closer to the center part of the golf club. Look at this, and there we go, look. By taking the tee peg, I've now moved it from a toe strike to a center strike. So let's say, and a common one, look at that, there you go, look. There's your center strike. Let's say you, and a lot of people do this, so let's say you are a heel striker, you're striking the ball out of the heel, you, you don't strike it out of the toe, and you've assessed this now. All you do, and you can, I'd probably do a broken tee for this one, put a tee peg just on the inside of the golf ball here, okay, slightly smaller, and simply do the same thing. This time, your heel striking it, all you're gonna do now is simply put a, a tee peg on this side and take the tee peg and the ball out here. And what's gonna happen now is, is if you were a heel striker, you're gonna be here, you could miss the tee. So I'm now having to hit both the tee and the ball. That's gonna bring that club further back. You might be asking, but Danny, how do I do that? Well, rather than get into all the complicated swing thoughts, your body is super smart. And when you give it practical exercises like uh, this uh, to do, focusing on the ball and the tee, it's just easier. Your body kind of works out how to swing to strike both ball and tee, simple. In fact, I gave this to a student recently, just yesterday, Cameron, and he had a beautiful swing, but was hitting it out of the heel all the time. As soon as we did this, immediately, it is like 20, 30 yards further. So, I mean, look at the distance on the carry of a center strike compared to the previous one. It's massive, all right? So let's look at this. So now I'm gonna hit here, but take the, both the tee peg and the ball. 
Let's have a look at this in action. And we've got another centre strike with clubhead speed at night three. We're back to a standard 180 yard in carry. So please, please, please get assess where you're striking the ball at impact. Learn the feel of it by playing the guessing game. And once you've established it's a toe strike, use a tee pick on one side. If you strike, it's a heel strike, strike on this side. When you then get on the golf course, and you can just imagine that the tee's there, okay, on either side, all right? Check that one out, then move on to step number two. Okay, look, if you find that you're missing the balls right, if your balls are finishing right of target, all your balls are finishing left of the target, all I would do is this. Again, don't get into complicated swing mechanics initially. If your balls miss right of target, it's because your club face, look, is aiming right at impact. If your balls miss left of target, it's because your club face is aiming left at impact, right? So all I want you to do is this. If your ball, like that one there, is aiming to the, is finishing right at target, all I want you to do is this. Take your club, close the face down by literally moving it from 12 o'clock here to 11 o'clock, right? Then, then grip the club. So watch this. All I've done now is I've set, I've gripped the club. My club feels like it's at 11 o'clock, and let's see what happens. Are we going to hit a shredder shot? Hey Presta, now it's not going way out to the right. We've now hit a pretty damn straight shot. Now you might find that you might have to calibrate this. You might feel like it needs to go from 11 to 10 initially, right? As an exaggeration. But these are simple things that you can do to start to immediately improve your direction on the golf course. I don't see golfers doing this enough. They're focusing on very complicated swim mechanics when actually, look, the answers are there in the ball flight. Your ball finishes right, close face, finishes left, open it at setup, okay? That is a simple one with step number two. Now, step number three is about curvature, okay? So if you find that ultimately you are creating too much curvature on your shots, okay? So let's say they're going too hooky or too slicey, then what that basically means is this. If you are slicing the golf ball, what creates the bend is the swing circle here. The more the swing circle goes across the target line in this direction, the more slice spin with, with a face open you're gonna create on this, okay? Vice versa, if you hook it, your swing circle is heading more this way. Combine that with a close face and you've got lots of hook. So what do we do? Let's start with the slicers. We've just said, look, if you're slicing it, you're generally missing the ball to the right of the fairway, right? So you've already done the first step in getting rid of it. You have closed the face. But to now, what we could do to really put the kind of, uh, the icing on the cake, what you could do is, is don't change your foot alignment initially, just get your knees, hips, and shoulders. Get the sense that everything is working this way. I'll show you from the, just down the line. So, slice position, you're more like here at impact. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna imagine everything, look, is moving this way. This way, I'll show you here again. This way. Now suddenly what we're gonna do is we're shifting everything in terms of the swing circle, look, more out this way. Combine that now with a close face and you're gonna neutralize your slice and watch this. I'm not gonna change my alignment of my feet at all, but let's see with a close face and then this movement here, what that does to the ball flight. You should see, but we're gonna to start to curve it this way. The complete opposite look to a slice. And now we've got that beautiful draw. If you're hooking the golf ball, what do we do? We simply do the opposite. We've just said, you've or if you're hooking it, your balls are finishing left to target. So you've already put the first ingredient in, which is what? Open the face, then grip it, right? The second ingredient is, is you're too much this way. The curve has created this. So what we're gonna do, we're actually now gonna imagine, look, that we're more here. We're gonna make sure that rather than being here, we're gonna be more on top of the ball and everything's gonna feel like the swing circle's working more this way, okay? I often feel like when I'm, people are hooking it, they finish high. I often imagine finishing in a very low position. So let's have a look at this in action. I've got a slightly more open face and I'm gonna now imagine my swing direction is more this way. And that now will start to create more of this style of shape, okay? So simple things that you can do to alter the curvature and your contact. Now one thing with irons off a fairway, just one final bonus uh, thing, which I, I kind of, I should have mentioned earlier, but I didn't. 
If you're struggling with contact, it's obviously not just face contact, it's also ground contact. So we're in a studio here, so we can't quite do it, but what we can do is this. Simple thing you do on a golf course, grab two tee pegs, put one tee peg ahead of the golf ball here, put another tee peg on this side of the golf ball here, and all I want you to do is this. Assess where your club is striking the ground. The best players in the world, their divot, the lowest point of their divot is four inches after the golf ball. Why is that important? That's what's gonna give you that beautiful, consistent strike. Often why amateur golfers are inconsistent is because when they do strike it well, they're just catching the, the ball almost right there. There's no real divot. Now the problem is, is if there's just an, a centimeter further back from that, it becomes a fat shot. I want you to start taking divots after the golf ball. So all you do look, I've now got this line, I make some practice swings backwards and forwards, making sure that I'm, that club is striking the ground after that line. Notice this, I'm not staying still, I'm allowing a beautifully flowing swing as I'm doing this. And what we'll see in a second, you'll see that low point distance here, watch this back. So have a look at this number here. 4.4 inches after the golf ball. That is what we do as professionals. I want you to get something similar. You probably don't have Trackman, but you can assess where you're hitting it by simply putting two tee pegs either side of the ball and literally look at where you're striking the ground. Make that a goal. These things will improve your ball striking, therefore your distance and accuracy out on that golf course without jumping into complicated swing mechanics. So I hope you love this video. I know it's gonna help. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with your friend and look, do check this video out right here. I'm gonna put one here just specifically for the irons, another one for the driver. They're both really about differences in the setup and they're gonna super, super help. But until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.